Today's words that we're going to be talking about today, and this is part of your motivation to getting better. The last word that we talked about was what? Procrastination. The words that we talked about before that was time. I kept telling you, time's going to always move. But as a human being, your time on earth is limited. You do have an expiration date. Time itself doesn't have an expiration date. So you have to really be accountable to what you're spending most of your time on in order to be effective in your life. You don't want to get to a certain point of your life where you look back and you say, damn, I spent too much time on that because I could have been doing other things that made me happy. And a lot of people, by the time they realize that their happiness is on them, they really regret stopping looking back at all the times that they wasted, that they wasted on someone else or on something. So today, what we're going to talk about is going to be yellow flags. The word of today is going to be yellow flags. What's the difference between yellow flags and red flags? Red flags, you can see em- you can see almost immediately. When a woman has red flags, you're going to see them. As soon as you see her, you're going to see them. As soon as you talk to her, you're going to see them. You're going to feel them. Typically, guys don't get around to spotting red flags until you have enough experiences under your belt to spot it. But when it comes to yellow flags, yellow flags are the buildup to narcissism. All right? What do I mean to build up? A lot of narcissists, narcissists, narcissist women, you don't really see at the beginning, and that's how you get trapped into the relationship. It's because you're not seeing what she's doing. A lot of narcissist women, they get in a relationship, and then they switch after two weeks. That's how they hit you, or they may switch up after a month. And this is what I'm going to call yellow flags. Yellow flags is where you've been thinking everything's been going right, everything is good, but now you're starting to play a little bit more close to her. What am I trying to say here? This is when her you get used to her beauty. All right? What does that mean, get used to her beauty? See, when you first meet someone, you always have this lovey-dovey phase where you guys are infatuated with each other if the chemistry is there. You may hug more. You may touch more. You may kiss more. You may have more sex. But either way, your company around you is always good for the most part. Most pu- puppy dove relationships puppy love relationships are going to be that way. At the beginning of the relationship, it's all good. It seems like it's working. And then down the road, you look like you're arguing and fighting. Okay. The the yellow flags are going to be when her beauty starts to become comfortable to you. What do I mean? When you first meet a woman, her beauty to you is going to be high because you have a sexual attraction to her. But then after a while, how she looks doesn't matter anymore because her mindset starts to change how you view her. This is why they always say, you find a beautiful woman, they'll show you a man who is sick of fucking her. And if you look at all these actors and actresses, all of these guys always marry supermodels and have always divorced the supermodels. That's one thing that you are going to learn about life. The most beautiful girls in the world will always have relationship problems as well because guys outgrow a woman's beauty. So now, yellow flags are something that pop up as her beauty starts to get old. You start to become comfortable with her beauty. Now the puppy love, the stuff y'all used to do is getting old. It's too routine. You're starting to see a different side of her that got you scratching her head. She ain't that cute in it. Like it's going to be little antagonizing things that she's going to do to that's going to throw you off. That's going to eventually build up to a narcissist woman. I keep trying to tell you guys, when it comes to a woman's narcissist, you create that. You create a narcissist person to you by relinquishing all your power. People are only narcissists to people they can control. I'm going to say it again. A narcissist is only around people they can control. What's narcissist to one person may not be narcissist to another. In other words, a woman may be narcissist to a simp, but she may get to me and be just, oh my God, I love Anthony. He's adorable. Not all, but I'm just using it as an example. She may get to me and be like, he's everything that I want. Let me start to act feminine. Let me give in to it. But the guy I didn't want, that's the guy that she controlled and she became a narcissist to because he gave up all his power for her. 
So he there to tell her what she want to hear, be her little do boy, because he want her. So one thing that you have to understand is a narcissist woman is programmed by the man that she's with. Why? Because he relinquishes all of his power. Right now, that's what we're going over is those yellow flags that starts to build up into the narcissist. And this is going to happen around the mark where the puppy love is dying out and her beauty, her beauty is starting to become comfortable. This is why you may see a lot of guys that have beautiful girls but be stressing the entire time while they're in a relationship. It's like, I got a beautiful girl, but fuck, man. Like, damn, I'm going through it being with her. Okay, she builds into that. She don't show you that at the beginning. At the beginning, the puppy love is, is, is several ways that that puppy love happened. But the yellow flag starts building into these red flags. As you get more comfortable with women and you get more experiences, you'll be able to know that here come a red flag right now. Why? She's already jumping into character. You'll be able to recognize the character that she's jumping into at the beginning that lets you know that she's going to flip down the road. Women are good at doing this, giving you a mask while there's somebody else behind the scenes. They're masters of it. And once men master that, that's going to be considered stoic. That's where you have your mask of not reacting to everything, but you may be dealing with the stuff behind the scenes that you got to eye out yourself. That's what women have mastered, giving men a mask while they have other intentions. Why? Men could be blinded by his sexual desires. All right, so we're going into the yellow flags. Let me check the likes on here. Make sure y'all ready for the yellow flags. All right, we got 147 in here, 173. Let's get those likes all the way up to 173. All right, the first sign, all right, the first thing that you must understand about a yellow flag is when her stories are not consistent, so are her actions. What do I mean? A perfect example of a yellow flag is when she starts to become comfortable telling you her business about her and her friends. All right. What do I mean by that? Nine times out of 10, she'll sit around you and tell you how bad her friends are, how her friends are against her, why her friends do this to her. She'll sit around you and do that. Right. And she'll have you convinced. That you shouldn't like this girl. That's what she's doing. She just keeps talking and she does it. She's already convinced you that this is a bad person. But the next day, all of a sudden, it's her best friend again. She's inconsistent with her stories. Even when it comes down to talking about her ex, she may tell you something about her ex. And then she'll rekindle that, she'll rekindle that conversation again. Once she rekindles that conversation again, it, the story will go in a different direction. And then you'll be left saying, hey, didn't this happen? Well, what about this? See, you got to start watching out for that. When the stories that she tells are inconsistent, when the moods that she's giving off is inconsistent. And you want to know why a lot of guys um, um, fall for this? It's because she starts to disrespect and dismiss everybody around you but you. All of a sudden, you'll start noticing she has problems with mom. It's mom's fault. She has problems with dad. It's dad's fault. She has problems with her best friends. It's her best friend's fault. Now, she's dismissing and talking about disrespectful to everybody around you but you. You start to feel like you and her have a bond because you're looking at all the drama that she's talking about and the people that she don't like. But she turns right back around and the people that so-called was doing her bad, now she's smiling and giggling with them. Now she got to go hang out with them. Now she got to go do this with them. And you sitting back like, hold on. When we were pillow talking, you told me that this girl was bad. When we were pillow talking, you told me that that girl did that. So the man, when you start loving a woman and, you, and she starts telling you her stories, you start to become her protector. So as you start to become her protector, you don't want her to get hurt. You're cautious to the people that she's saying is hurting her. A lot of guys don't, a lot of guys don't pay attention to that pillow talk. You see her making a change, but she's convinced you that she has enemies. But you'll start to notice everybody that's supposed to be her enemy. Now you create a dislike for them, but you see her going back, hanging around them. And you looking like, hey, why did she do the switch? Why is she doing the switcheroo? She just sat here and told me that. Okay, 
that goes all the way back to her inconsistency. A lot of men don't pay attention to the fact that she's being inconsistent with her actions. Why? Because she has not flipped on you yet. She's still balling you up. She's building the mood. She's attaching you to her. She got you feeling like, hey, it's me and you now. All these people that hurt me, you know what I'm saying? It's me versus them. She starts to build that bond with you, pulling you in closer to like, you're doing things right. I'm so happy I met you, this guy. All these other people, fuck them. She got you ready to say fuck them to everybody she's affiliated with. Cyrus Hines comes in with the first. Hold on. I got you, Cyrus. Cyrus Haynes comes in with the 999. Big shout outs, bro. Really appreciate it. So she got you convinced that her best friend stabbing her in the back, mommy, daddy, sisters, and brothers, all her other friends have done her wrong. Ex-boyfriends have done her wrong. And then she's smiling and giggling in these people's faces. Now it's like, I got to go hang out with my friend. I thought that your friend was fucking stabbing you in the back. Now that's your girl. Y'all in love. Y'all going out together. Now you got to go do this. She has you doing that. Her inconsistency with her stories is a yellow flag because you want to know why? You and her going to be cool till you start pointing it out. Once you start pointing it out, then she may say you jealous or you controlling or you this. That's when she gaslights you. When her stories don't stay consistency, right? She starts setting it up to gaslight you in the future. So you got to be careful when she has you convinced that y'all are in a relationship, right? Y'all are good and everybody outside your relationship is bad. But Everybody that's supposed to be bad, you start seeing her hang out with them. Now she on the phone more when she with you. And you're like, hold on, why you? Why would you give this girl so much attention while you with me? And supposedly she been stabbing you in the back. All Everybody's bad, but now you sitting back listening to her drama and gossip go on that you're just kind of like, hold on. <laughs> when you supposed to leave them the fuck alone? Okay, these are the yellow flags that are building up because normally the switcheroo is not going to happen automatically. It's going to start to happen. You're going to start to see it happen. And it mainly starts with that yellow flag. Hold on. You said that this girl was a bad girl, that these people were bad to you, and that they were stabbing you in the back. And now all of a sudden y'all are best friends. That's going to be the first yellow flag that a lot of guys ignore. You ignore that yellow flag. You ignore that the stories are inconsistent. So when you start seeing those yellow flags, how do you handle that yellow flag like that? You acknowledge it to yourself, but don't say nothing to her. You have to realize the more of her that you acknowledge and come to the conclusion of, the better it's going to be for you to exit. The worst thing you can do is acknowledge it and then say something about it immediately, but she has a great rebuttal. You can't do that. A lot of y'all are not that experienced yet. So right now, if you're going through it, you acknowledge it, but you start waiting for the ultimate red flag. What's the ultimate red flags? You start paying attention to more stories that are not consistent without saying nothing. You have to realize this is how a woman builds up to leave. She lets the man goes through all these problems and she watches them and she lets it build up. She lets him keep making mistakes. This is why when a lot of girls go to leave a husband or get a divorce, she pulls out all his flaws. I remember you cheating doing this. I remember you doing this. I said nothing. I remember you saying this. I said nothing. She pulls up the buildup in order to use it in court. A lot of housewives do this. Okay, when you're in a relationship, you got to do the same thing when you're dealing with a narcissist woman. You have to be able to watch her make her mistake, acknowledge it like, all right, she did it. Let's see if she do it again. Once she starts doing it again, it'll start telling you that the red flag's about to build up. Trust me, the more you study her yellow flags, the easier it is to leave, the better it is you spot it in the next woman. Next, and this is going to be a biggie. She never talks about her past, but gives bad vibes. All right. What do I mean? Bad vibes. You'll want to know about her past, but she'll say, oh, I don't want to talk about that. I'm over him. Oh, I don't want to do this. I'm over that. Oh, I don't really want to talk about that. She'll give you a glimpse of a story, right, that'll drag you in, but she'll never tell you the entire story because she'll have you convinced that she's trying to move on with her life. No, it don't work like that with women. Women love a good story. They love a good game. They love to play victim, especially when it's new to the next to the guy that they're new with. 
The new guy has to get the victim game. He has to get the drama. Why? Because every woman goes in a relationship hoping that the one man sees her as being vulnerable. That's where her power is at. Let me convince him that I'm vulnerable. This is what throws men into simp mode. It's when a woman is trying to place a vulnerable situation in front of you. So understand, when she cannot talk about her past, Okay, she's ultimately trying to cover up something big. That is a yellow flag, but it's not a complete yellow flag. But it is a flag. Listen to what I'm telling you. If she's feeding you a psychological horror story where it's just a little bit of pieces at a time, but she ain't going all the way into the story, okay, you need to acknowledge that too. But believe it or not, that's going to be a bigger red flag than what you think. Because when, when, when shit comes out the closet, Sometimes you could be you could be looked at as a fool. This is how a lot of guys are in relationship walking around with purebred whores and they everybody knows it but them. It's because she's convinced him, oh, I don't want to talk about that. I'm not in that part of my life. I'm moving on, blah, 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 this, that, and the third. You got to start watching for that. When she done breadcrumbed the story that she's not able to reveal the full, the, the full, she can't reveal the full story to you. You know why? Because she hasn't healed from it. Girls that are in relate that are still in love with their ex and trying to move on will not talk about that ex. They would try to make it feel like they have moved on when deep down in their heart, they're still in love. And the reason why they don't want to talk about it is because they haven't had closure. So if she's unwilling to talk about her past, one thing that you have to understand is there's no closure. If there's no closure, there's a yellow flag because she still has emotions attached to that relationship. It's just that she's trying her hardest not to think about it, hoping that if she's with a nice guy long enough that she'll fall for him. This is a complete yellow flag that guys overlook all the time. All the time, that little yellow flag where it's like, oh, I give you a bit of my story. And then the whole relationship, you keep trying to wonder what all happened, what all happened in the relationship. You, you know it's something there, but you haven't put your foot on it. You know it's something with the guy that you just met, but you just ain't put your foot on it. That's a yellow flag. When she has not, when she has not fully opened up about her past, she's trying to cover something up. The next one is going to be, you'll start to see this after a while. She's going to want unrealistic demands out of you. All right. This is where she's trying to get you to do stuff. This is where she's trying to control your life. This comes down the road. You have to realize this comes down the road. You see it when she starts telling you all her friends are bad. Right. All her friends are bad. And then you're cluing and you're like, but you're still hanging around them. All your friends are bad, but you're, you're still hanging around them. Okay, once she builds that bond there and she knows that now you hate her friends and you dislike them, okay, she got you balled up. Now she's your little, this is my little, this is my little guy that's going to be my do boy. This is, now she's officially made you the simp because you took her side without validity. What do I mean? You took her side without knowing the story. You only listened to her. You may get around her friends and the full story come out and you may find out like, holy shit, I'm finding out my girl for the streets, nigga. It's been plenty of guys that have gotten around his girl and her friends and her friends have revealed that she's for the streets, but you're just ignoring it because you think, all right, those are old guys. I don't, she ain't dealing with them no more. I'm, I'm here to be the guy that, that's different from all those guys. No, if you find yourself the only guy around all of her friends, oh, she for the streets. You can best believe that. So once she pulls you in, you will be this guy. You may be the guy that's driving your girlfriend and her friends to the club. Angel Torres comes after she has you wrapped in and you're fully convinced. Now, everything that she wants to do, you're going to follow. So she's going to be demanding that you do stuff. This is why most guys, once they get in a relationship with a woman and you don't, you're not aware she's a narcissist at the beginning and then it creeps up through you like that. Okay. She's going to want you to be there to answer the phone call every time she calls. Now y'all doing stuff. She's making all the plans. Okay. That's where the ye yellow flag starts right there. When you slowly but surely realize that you may not have power in this relationship. Next thing you know, she's dressing you. When she starts dressing you, 
That's the ultimate yellow. But a lot of guys think that this is cool until you walking around the mall with mismatched sweaters on, not realizing all she's trying to do is show other girls I have him control. MMD with the two bucks. <laughs> Big shout outs, my dude. He says, I'm going through the same situation, bro. Okay. You guys got to acknowledge it. That's why I'm talking about it today. I'm talking about it. It's because I know a lot of guys out there, you've been in this situation. You've been going through this situation. And you are you don't see narcissism at the beginning. You see narcissism around the, the, the six-month period. It's because she takes the time out to build you up to being this dude that she's going to want a lot of demands out of in unrealistic relationships. What do I mean? She'll be happy you're the little simp at first, but be mad you're not a millionaire down the road. I'm going to say it again. She'll be mad you her little simp, basic guy that love her at first, but then she'll be mad you're not a millionaire down the road. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You got to start watching when she starts trying to demand more out of you. Maybe demand you to work more. Maybe demand this out of you. She wants you to do more like this. She'll start commanding. Maybe she wants you to look a certain way. Then she wants you to pick up the phone every time she calls. She wants you to pick her up. Next thing you know, you're just a servant to her. At the same time, she's trying to tell you, I want you to be this glamorous alpha male now. A lot of women do that. A lot of women get with the guys. Because they love the idea of him. And then they want him to switch up mid-relationship and become a different type of guy. Prime example, look at Sierra. Sierra has tried to change Russell hundreds of times. She's constantly tried to change him, right? And she's unable to change him because he is who he is. But look how she continues to change. How she continues to need a new thirst. She continues to need a new look. That's what Future said. Future said, I didn't want to be with Sierra because she wants to be everything for the cameras. I don't want to be everything for the cameras. Okay, that's what Russell Westbrook didn't think, think he was getting. He thought he was getting a wholesome single mother who wanted to be a wife. But he didn't realize is that at the beginning of the relationship, that lovey-dovey shit was okay. Once she won you over and started making the adjustments... You, he allowed, he, he, he turned her into a narcissist to him just by relinquishing all his power, by taking the photos, by becoming the stepdad, by becoming a, looking good in front of the cameras. So he played into her world. That's what narcissist women do. They build up the bond at the beginning of the relationship, convince you that everybody around them is fucking bad and hurting them. Right. You get closer to her. Why? Because you care about her and you want to protect her. So now your senses go up and you're like, oh, like nobody that she knows because all these people tried to hurt her. Now I'm around her. I'm going to make sure that she's happy. Right. But you will notice that dysfunctionality with all them people. She loves it. She continues to go for it. And guess what? As she changed, she's going to be demanding that you change as well. Why? Because you've already given in to everything else. Next thing, she avoids real com conversation. You and her can never sit down and have a real conversation. Most of the conversations that you're having with her consist of the drama that's going on with everybody around her, the drama on TV, and that's about it. If it ain't trending, and if the drama ain't a co-worker at work that she has problems with or something on love and hip hop and she's running away from real issues like she won't talk about the matrix. She won't talk about politics. When she like when you're with your girl, you and her will share these thoughts with each other like you're just bound to talk about it, especially if you're a man. You're paying attention to politics. You're paying attention to the news. You're paying attention to the stock market. You're paying attention to how the world is being played. OK, if that woman is not playing the game of life and she. She's playing the Broadway life. Okay, that's a yellow flag. A lot of guys out here, especially with money, you have to play the real world in order to win. And then they take their money and give it to their woman to live out a fantasy. You have women out there that own hair salons, right? That don't even profit anything. But they got a rich boyfriend that lets them go to the hair salon every day and pretend to do their friend's hair as if they have a real salon and they don't. These are just friends that they know coming into there to hang out. But he's still just paying all the bills to make it look like that. To make it look like she really has a salon and she don't. So you have to understand that when you have women that are avoiding red, real conversations, that's a yellow flag. And the reason why is because she's stuck in la-la land. You cannot have a woman that's stuck in la-la land. If you was to ask her, like, who are you voting for? She'll probably say something like, uh, Trump racist. 
she'll say that. <laughs> she won't talk about politics. She wouldn't look at the fact that um, China and Russia just joined forces to go against NATO. Like, everyone's blind to even that happening now. They don't realize that something really big just happened behind the scenes that just placed America into a vulnerable situation. When I say vulnerable, America is close to being conquered. And we don't, we, no one's paying attention to what just happened here. Right? So if you sit down with your woman and you want to talk to her about these things, but she want to talk about the latest TikTok trend or some celebrity gossip or some reality show or some girl at her job that makes her mad or one of her friends backstabbing her and she don't pay attention to everything, she just looks at life as black and white when it comes to real things, that's a yellow flag. And the reason why a lot of guys overlook this type of girl is because she's fun. She has a lot of energy. She's good in bed. It's never a dull moment around her. He doesn't have a life, so he stays in the relationship. Majority of guys that stay in relationships with women that are bad for them are going to be the guys who really don't have anything going. And then the woman gives him life. All right? The next thing that's going to be a red flag is that, once again, She's going to always just play the blame game. She won't be accountable for nothing. Like literally nothing. And you're going to be the breadcrumber. See, you're going to be the, the person that gets breadcrumbed and gaslighted. What do I mean? You will never get sex the way you want sex. You will never go on the dates you want. You will never do anything that you want to do whatsoever. And if anybody comes around, she's quick to show you I really don't care about you. I tell you. Most guys that are in yellow flag situations are the guy that's on a date with his woman and he's hoping deep down in his heart, he's praying that y'all don't run across her type. You praying you don't walk through the mall and she see that guy that she really like or y'all go to big events and all of a sudden you're in a room full of a whole bunch of dudes. You're, you're hoping she don't look at the guy that you know she going to really like. All right. A lot of men end up in these situations because her dysfunctionality, her dysfunctionality keeps you entertained and gives you a life. You have to start watching the yellow flags because one thing about yellow flags, they get overlooked the most. And most guys, by the time you see the red flag, it's too late. You in too deep. You feel like you can't even get out the relationship. By the time you get to realizing that your girl is throwing around red flags, nine times out of ten, you have Stockholm Syndrome. What does that mean? That means you'll recognize her flaws. You'll go tell everybody your business. Hey, yo, man, this girl doing this, man. Hey, man, this girl, <laughs> me and her over here, man. <laughs> you yeah, you just grouping up with people to tell all your business. You calling up your boy in the car like, man, and that bitch did this. Y'all on the phone for three hours talking about some shit that she did wrong. But guess what? You still ain't left her. The only way that that relationship is going to leave is if she cut you off. And you have a lot of guys that are in those positions where it's like you have Stockholm Syndrome. What that means, she's already bypassed the yellow, yellow flags. You overlooked those, and she went full into red flags. But at that point, she's a narcissist. She's going to continue to get what she wants, and you have Stockholm Syndrome. That means you don't know how to leave. But it's still you and her versus the world. What that mean? That means all her friends that she said backstab her and she went back and hung out with them, going to the club, coming back with you or going there important. She got to stay on the phone with them because they're going through things. And you're looking at her like, well, all these people were treating you bad. And then all of a sudden in the relationship, you want to leave because you realize she's dramatic. Once she starts to beef with these people, even though you know she's bad, you will still beef with those people because of her. You'll find yourself arguing, fighting all the time, debating all the time. Most guys debate, debate, debate right now because they done sat in a relationship with a woman where they had to debate everything. They done sat around women debating everything. So most guys that are in these dysfunctional relationships, arguing and fighting all the time, even when y'all get out of these relationships, you run into people and start with the same shit. Your next friend, you're debating about shit. You're arguing with shit. You're going through the same cycle with people. You start off at the beginning. Everybody love each other. Everybody's giving compliments. The people that's getting the, the people that's getting the compliments, they're humble. Oh no, nah, I'm just trying. No, let's give each other compliments. We just met. The relationship is fresh. 
That's how all relationships are, right? They start off really good. Y'all best friend, everybody give you compliments and, 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 and start being humble, getting the, getting the compliments. You start to act humble. But it comes some point of that relationship. Your dysfunctionality kicks in and you create an argument to never speak to them again. It's the same cycle. If you sit back and watch all the flags and how it builds up, you must stop at the yellow flag and you must start looking the most. Because you have to look at your cycle. If your cycle is just like most of these narcissist women cycles, everything starts off good. Then they start to transition. Next thing you know, they got you hooked in. You got to start watching the yellow flags. All right. And that's going to be the word of the day. It's going to be yellow flags. And that's what I want you guys to pay attention to. Make sure that you acknowledge it and pay attention to the next level. All right, now we're about to get into the reaction video side over here. Let me see what we got. 217, 242 in there. Let me get some donations, man. Ask me some questions. Before we go into reactions, let me do some questions on what you think about yellow flags. And if someone wants to put in a statement how they feel about yellow flags, go ahead and do that. But definitely get the likes up and definitely let's try to get these donations up before we go into the next portion of the live. All right, let's see what else. Hold on, let me move my little screens around. And if you guys like that yellow flag situation, and another yellow flag, I didn't even put that in there, is she's never on time. That's a yellow flag. And the reason why that's a big yellow flag if a woman is, is never on time is because she's making sure that she's the leader of the relationship. So if you have a woman that's never on time, trust me, narcissism is coming down the road. That means that she's making sure that you stop and pay attention to her. All right? Kismo said she never knew what a yellow flag was. It's, hey, that's how it is over here at Sigma Nation. Over here at Sigma Nation, you start learning and seeing things that you never saw before. You know? So Gizmo, big shout-outs to you. But that's what it is. That's the new thing. Yellow flags, Right? I think we should start calling it yellow flag because it's pretty much supposed to be when you wake up. Big shout outs to Jared, 20 year recovery. It's supposed to be the awakening. You don't want to get to the red flags. The red flags means that it's fully part of her personality at that point. 